friends, uh, today we have Satish Kumar with us, uh, who is one of our course enrolled students, and he's joining Infosys as a lead analyst for data science and machine learning projects soon. And he has a total of six years of work experience at IBM after his graduation. And in these six years, he has been working as a software engineer in multiple roles at IBM. And he has done his undergraduate degree, which is BTEC in uh, electronics and communications engineer. So he has a total of six years of work experience and he has successfully transitioned from a software engineering role to a managerial data science role. So it will be very interesting to hear his journey and also understand his learning experiences and his interview experiences. Thank you, Satish, for taking the time to join and share your journey with us. Yeah, thank you, Srikant, for your time and uh, explaining about my background here. So, uh, uh, Satish, can you uh, shed some light on your interview experiences, especially given that you're going from a software engineering six years experience to a data science managerial role or a or a lead or a lead role? So, can you shed some light on your interview experiences in some detail? Yeah, sure, so, Srikant. Uh, here, first I applied through the career, which uh, was career site. And later, uh, they came asking for my educational details, about my background, work experience, everything. Once they scheduled interview, it took, uh, it took along 15 minutes, five zero. Okay. Uh, they, they asked me about in-depth questions. Now, in, they covered all the areas like NLP, um, machine learning, data analysis, few statistic questions. And this all went like, uh, they're looking for something lead role. So they're expecting more from the employee. So they ask uh, questions in depth where I can't answer few, but somehow manage it with a, like, when you were explaining to me, you, you take some examples. So like, for example, when you were explaining some statistical, you took example as your father did uh, 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 the a dam analysis, yes, right? Yes, yes. So in that way, I, I took some examples and uh, even though I'm not aware of some concept, I would like to take some examples from uh, in the uh, physical area or something. I would, uh, I explain them in the way they can understand easily. Yeah, so for, the, uh, for typically lead and managerial roles, that's sometimes important because you also work with a lot of non-data science folks in your day-to-day yes. -day work. And you need to explain them, assuming that they don't know data science, they don't know what is a log normal distribution or a Pareto distribution and all that. So Yes, yes. I think there are two guys joined within the interview panel. One is looking for some manager skills. One is looking for technical skills. Oh, so it was they're, one is they're, to they're two. You were being interviewed yes, yes. by two people. One technical, they're one manager. People. Okay. Uh, they are switching questions. One question is from the technical guy. One question is from the manager guy. So oh, the technical it. is asking technical questions. And based on my answer, the manager is asking how you can handle a situation. Okay. When there is some situation, how you are going to put your effects to resolve or to just give some guidance to the team members or how you can solve the problem in real case. How do you convince the clients or how do you wanna deal with the large set of data? Such questions. No, those are real world applied questions that you have to deal yes. with as a, as, as a lead of a team. Obviously you have to deal yes. with it on day-to-day -day basis. Cool. So you also said there were questions asked in NLP. So could you shed some light on that? NLP, they came through basic questions like what is the n-grams? So let's start with n-grams. And uh, they went uh, for breadth model. Okay. The best, but not in depth. Like, uh, they didn't ask how the breadth works, but they asked what is breadth. We have an idea. Well, yes, I have an idea. But their main intention is the person can learn not from, uh, like, uh, he won't stop learning from here. He can learn a new technology or not. So, did because, you ask about DERT, BERT, the, the transformer based yes. model? Oh, okay, got yes. it, got yes. it, got it. Okay. And, so, but they know uh, too yeah. deep into the mathematics. They expect you to, to know the but, breadth of techniques yeah, from n-grams yeah, to what? Yes, what is what? Uh, okay. they, but they went in depth for machine learning area. Oh, okay. Again, it's good because I think the reason they probably asked you the BERT question is to see if you're up to date because it's yeah, almost yeah, up to like date the state of technique. Are you continuously yeah. learning or have you stopped learning? Yeah, yeah stop. This is because uh, uh, later when I ask at the end of the interview, they ask any questions like that. They will really last right when we concluding an interview they come with us you don't have any questions i asked her okay you told that uh, this for machine learning area then you went for nlp may I know the reason you told that no no actually we want to make our employees to be up to date with the technologies where you can apply with latest algorithms or uh, coming up any new techniques for example let us take for imbalanced data set we have a confusion matrix but recently i saw a blog Cohen Scapa statistics, which is used for the uh, imbalanced data set or multi-class uh, labels. 
and it works robust compared with uh, this uh, CM confusion matrix. So the testing is this employees up to date or not. If he's stopping somewhere, then why to hire him as a lead? That is the main question indirectly they're pointing out. That's a very good point because as a lead, you got to constantly learn and update because then then only you can motivate and work with people who are reporting with reporting to you and also talk to clients better. Yes, so machine learning is nothing but trying with different models and uh, different uh, matrices. Yes, it, it's so about it experimentation. It's about a yeah, lot experimentation. of experimentation and seeing what works. Yes. Cool. So uh, th that's a very interesting uh, set of points that you that that you focused on because this is very very important for people with more experience, especially who are going into slightly managerial or lead type of roles. Cool. So I had one other question. So as part of applied AI course. What was your learning strategy? Oh, uh, my learning comes. I just uh, as well when working with IBM, I have morning four thirty two after one thirty shift. Okay. And my, okay. Uh, when I log in at four thirty a.m., maximum the in that uh, session we don't have much work. So I, I have to start at four thirty and end at six thirty. So I used to let the early mornings where we are fresh mind that we can take down some points. Actually, I got notes from the player team. No, but it's a very nice strategy is. to allocate early in the morning, two hours every day, diligently and uh, I mean, perfectly. I mean, that's a very nice slot yes. because I also try to get the hardest work of the day done early in the morning. Yeah. Like most but of my video because, recording happens early in the morning. Yeah. Because it is the fresh time where we come with fresh feel, energy, fresh energy and everything. Yes, yes, yes. Once you start your day with your business works and everything, we will get deviated with different kind of things. Cool. Then everything so on an average, uh, on an average, how much effort did you put into Applied AI course through the last year or so? I joined Applied AI course on May 7th, 2020. Okay. Uh, because of this, my working hours and uh, there's uh, some challenges. Uh, later, I got married in between. Due to that, I got some little bit deviated. But in average, for a week, uh, I spend almost uh, 10 to 15 hours. Okay, got it. And so I used to your two hours topics. a day, basically. Your four thirty yeah, to six thirty every day. That way. Oh, and cool. uh, one more thing, assignments helped me a lot because uh, while doing assignments, I thought it is very difficult at the uh, initial stages. But once I getting transaction, learning things, and understanding the mathematical behind the algorithms and matrices, it seems to be easy. But I can't say totally easy. No, but no. We have so, to put our effects. We have to search somewhere. We have to get something yes, from yes. the applied team or friends. I got some good friends from the Applied AI team itself. I used Very to good. have a chat with them or I used to get some pseudo code from them. Very good. Very good. Yeah. The assignments certainly are not trivial. Lot of yeah. students early in the early in their journey, right? Feel assignments are hard, but once they get into that hook of doing it, right? Things will become easy. Uh, easy. Once we getting learning and understanding things, everything will be like trivial. It will be going like one by one. But if you come with the back operational algorithm, then the next assignment documentation will be easy for us. Yes, because yes. we are learning something from here, applying those concepts in other second assignment. Yes. So, so all these assignments are incremental. Us. What you did last yeah, time, you'll use it in the next one. You'll use it the in the next, next assignment. One. Yeah. That I absorbed and I started learning from the, that point. Very good. Very nice. So you're saying two to... things that are very important for people in the five to eight year bracket are depth of knowledge, breadth of and knowledge, and the ability to showcase that you're a continuous learner. Yes. Okay, Satish, uh, that's all I had. Uh, and thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you on behalf of all of our students and team at Applied AI course for sharing your journey. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Srikanth.